Hey, what's going on, y'all? Jay from JS Films. Now, today, Unreal Engine 5.3 preview just came out officially. As you all know, I've been messing around with 5.3, 5.4 for a couple of months, but today is the official day for 5.3. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about some of my favorite features in the official Unreal Engine 5.3 version of Unreal Engine. All right, this is not going to be everything. Obviously, I'm just going to talk about some of the stuff that I like that kind of pertains to me. So first things first, we're going to talk about the reflection bounces in 5.3. I've made a video about this a couple of months ago. It's pretty much the same exact thing. Now we can actually add multiple bounces with Lumen Reflections as long as you're using hardware ray tracing with hit bounce reflections. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I have a scene right here. And again, we're going to go to edit project settings to make sure that we have everything turned on. I'm going to type in hard, hardware, and I'm scroll down. We're going to make sure that we have support hardware ray tracing right here and use hardware ray tracing when available. And then next, I'm going to go to my post process volume and access the Lumen settings. Right here, we have GI and we have Lumen right here. So you can see I have it set up and I have hit lighting reflections turned on already. And then the new setting is going to be right here called max reflection bounces. So as you can see right here, I'm going to turn my camera on. And the first thing you're going to notice in the back right here is that some of the reflections just have a dark spot. But basically what's happening is, is after it reflects once, it just fades into black. That's what usually happens when you only have one bounce. But now if I change this from one to two, you're going to see that that bounce is now going to bounce again within. And if I put three, now you have a bounce within the bounce that's reflecting again. It's like a bounceception, which is a new movie coming out from Christopher Nolan. So as you can see, from one to two, that looks extremely better. Now, if you've been using ray tracing deprecated like I have been using, and if you go right here and change it to ray trace deprecated, you're gonna see that in the ray tracing reflections, it's pretty much the same setting as this max bounces right here. So the more bounces, the better, but at the same time, there is kind of like a diminishing return. For me in this scene right here, I probably wouldn't go past two to be honest. So I'll just change this to Lumen. So that's good to go. Now, the next feature in 5.3 is that now we no longer need Lumen GI for reflections to work. So if I go right here, we have 5.4. And if I switch this to reflection, you're going to see that we have reflections right now. But if I switch this off, even though we're going to lose some ambient lights in the background, we are still getting reflections on our character. If you want to try this out in Unreal Engine 5.2, go ahead. If you switch this off in Unreal Engine 5.2, you are not going to get reflections whatsoever. So this is a 5.3, and obviously right now, it, we're actually in 5.4. So that's a very good addition. We don't need GI Lumen for Lumen reflections to work, which is amazing. Okay, so the next feature we're going to be taking a look at is path tracing support for Niagara Fluids. So I'm going to go to my Edit plugins is make sure we have fluids enabled right there niagara fluid is good and then what i'll do is i'll go my content browser right click fx niagara system new system from a template click next and i'm just going to select let's just do this uh 3d moving grid fire finish that that's going to load up now and i'm just going to drag and drop that into our scene go back to my sequencer and i'm just going to say add to sequencer next what i'll do is i'll click on a component and add a new life cycle track so we can actually control the life cycle of this Niagara. Now, it is a little bit too bright because of our scene is too bright. So we've got a post process right here. If I set it to like seven, you're going to see a little bit more of the color as far as the explosion goes, right? So that's that. Now, for this to work in path tracing, we are going to need a console command, and that's going to be r.pathtracing.heterogenominous volume, and I'm going to set that to one. And I'll put that command on the screen because I know I'm right behind it. So I'm going to go now to lit and path tracing. And now we have that fluid Niagara in path trace mode looking pretty darn good. Um, not using, this is not using any like VFX. All right, that's too soon. All right, so that's that feature right there, which is nice if you like explosions. Now, additionally, in 5.3, like I made a video about, substrate is now enabled in experimental mode in path tracing, which is super cool. I'll put the link on the top right corner of this video right here so you can check that out. Substrate, path tracing in the 5.3 and the 5.4. So that's very, very good. Okay, so the next feature we're gonna take a look at is Nanite Landscapes. So in 5.3, you can now Nanite Landscapes. What I'll do is I'll delete this floor because we're gonna be creating a new landscape. Eight by eight is fine. And I'll go to my selection mode, click on that landscape, and in the details panel, actually type Nanite and then build the data, this is now going to make my landscape nanite. You can pretty much nanite everything in Unreal Engine 5, which is amazing. I wish I could nanite my bank account, though. 
So that being said, if I go to lit, nanite visualization, triangles, there is now your nanite landscape. And what's cool about this is I can actually go ahead and make this a little bit crazy. So if I go to lit mode right now and can actually, and then what I'll do is I'll sculpt this out. We are going to have to rebuild this, but just kind of show you what it looks like. There you go. So you can see if I go down and lit nanite triangles, it's not going to work because now we actually have to rebuild the data. And after that, we're going to go to lit nanite visualization and triangles. And as you can see, that is now nanite once again. So again, that's another cool feature in Unreal Engine 5.3. The next feature we're going to be taking a look at is nanite support for spline meshes. Now, this is great because that means we can nanite walls and uh, floors and such whenever you're using spline meshes. This is awesome for world building. So with that being said, I have smart fence right now. And the command that you're going to need is r.nanite allow spline meshes equals to one. And, and right here, I just have a smart fence blueprint that I got from the marketplace, but it can also work with your custom BP if you want to do that. I'm just kind of showcase this as fast as I can. And now if I go to the spline and extend the spline, just to kind of show you, I can go to lit, nanite, triangles. And now as you can see, we have nanite landscapes and nanite spline meshes. Amazing stuff. So that's pretty much it for all the features that I like in 5.3. There's a couple of stuff in here that you should check out. Sparse volume textures right here. And additionally, there is a anamorphic lens calibration solver experimental thing in here that it looks like lets you add distortion to your lens, but I just can't find it. I've asked people in the forum and on Twitter. I just... Honestly, I can't find any information on it. So uh, that being said, that's pretty much it for this video. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get 100,000 subscribers this year. Like always, thanks for watching. And what was your favorite 5.3 feature that I covered here today on the channel? Peace out.